global drug war now stands in the way not just of effective AIDS treatment, but is in direct conflict with human rights. When you are pursuing a policy that treats somebody as a criminal simply because of what they put in their body, that seems to me almost by definition a violation of human rights. When you are depriving millions of people of their freedom by incarcerating them, that seems to me a violation of human rights. When you are depriving indigenous people of the rights to grow agricultural products that they have grown and used in traditional forms for hundreds if not thousands of years, that seems like a violation of human rights. We are seen as non-citizens and because we are non-citizens we can be scapegoated and this allows uh, governments to say you are criminal, you are bad, you are evil and therefore we can lock you up we can take away your rights, we can torture you to try to make you no longer a drug user, and we can execute you if you sell drugs. Drug users' human rights are being violated, are violated daily through mass incarceration, through detention camps, through denial of services, through denial of HIV prevention materials. That means that people are left stuck with a virus that will, will possibly kill them or may kill them. About 80% of, of, of terminal cancer patients develop severe pain, and that pain can only be treated effectively with opioid um, medications, um, such as morphine or methadone. In many countries, patients with cancer don't have access to the medications because um, there are drug regulations um, that make it very difficult for doctors to prescribe. So the end result is that there are millions of people world, worldwide who die in horrible pain because they can't get access to a medication that costs just a few pennies. Police abuse and taking money from drug users, raping drug users, uh, torturing drug users, it has nothing to do with the conventions. Uh, the conventions uh, don't say you have to do it, but the conventions provide the certain framework or the certain discourse on drug issue uh, that puts it in the legal you know, the main. A lot of people end up in compulsory drug treatment centers and those drug treatment centers is a gross exaggeration of what they really are because there's often no medically assisted treatment. What kind of human rights uh, abuses happen in these camps? First of all, forced labor is a human rights abuse in and of itself. These people aren't prisoners. They've never seen a lawyer or a judge. They are put into torture rooms, hung by one or both arms, made to kneel on glass or sharp objects, forced to squat in water in rooms too small to stand up in, starved and beaten. In China, we interviewed a, a former guard in one of the drug detention centers. And what we found, you know, we asked him why the center was testing routinely everyone for HIV and not giving them their results. And the guard frankly said, well, we test people to find out to find out which of the women are HIV positive, to know who we need to use a condom with. And then, you know, we have sex with them, and then we give them heroin to comfort them afterwards. And, and we asked this guard also about physical abuse, about beatings of, of the drug users in these centers. And he said, well, yeah, that happens. And we asked him how often it happens. And he said, oh, well, about 10%. And we said, well, you know, how do you calculate 10%? And he said, well, anything higher than 10% would be a human rights problem. Estimates are that around quarter of the world's pop, uh, prison population is in prison for non-violent drug-related uh, offences. The war on drugs has resulted in perhaps as much as two million people being in prison who needn't be there. Well, there are people that all of us know, if you've lived in New York for any amount of time, that have gotten these uh, ridiculously long sentences for very small possession charges or paraphernalia charges because as the law stood 
uh, a judge didn't have discretion, you could get a maximum sentence of 25 years. Imagine a young person named Obama, had he been caught uh, with possession of marijuana, uh, which he has openly said he smoked, he would have had a felony conviction. He never could have run for public office. He couldn't even work as a janitor in a school uh, because of a felony conviction. He couldn't vote. Uh, this is a huge issue and there's an ethical obligation for people like that, for physicians, for scientists to start speaking out about it. In many places, um, uh, prisons are overcrowded because of the numbers of people who are in prison um, for drug-related um, offenses. You see a whole range of human rights violations piled up on, on, t on top of that because of over overcrowded conditions, because of extended waiting times in pretrial detention, uh, because of unfair trials. There's at least 16 countries in Asia that still implement the death penalty for drug-related crimes. Uh, Singapore, Malaysia, Indonesia, Thailand, China. Uh, China, for example, televises executions of drug users and drug dealers on the 24th of June, the International Day Against Illicit Drug Trafficking. In 2003, the Thai government implemented a very bloody war on drugs where over 2,200 drug users and petty dealers were arrested, brought to police stations, released, and shortly after release, someone was waiting in an alley and they were essentially shot in the back of the head, this execution style. And then the government claimed the success of getting rid of drugs in the country. More and more, the international human rights community is gaining consciousness of the ways in which the drug war and drug criminalization are in fact violations of traditional human rights. Once you start locking people up or treating people like drugs as something to be controlled or contained rather than as some, someone to be valued, then the costs are terrible. You know, whether you're talking about 2,800 people gunned down in Thailand or you're talking about 400,000 people put in labor camps and forced treatment centers in Asia, or you're talking about hundreds of thousands of people jailed in Russia for the residue in a used syringe, and then put in places where they have no choice but to share a syringe, or they have no access to condoms or anything that could protect them, the, the human rights costs are almost unmeasurable. Mm -hmm.